I don't think this is a joke. At 52 years of age, I don't see the idea of a cohort group of people the way we look at it in science and psychology, psychology, and let's say reality, because that's what we're going to talk about. I don't see. The sense of reality as being something that we can question so easily. At 52, we grew up in our time spans after me part of the future people we talk about a sense of reality like that you know questionable like let's talk about a deterrence of reality we grew up thinking reality is what we see in front of us why because our reality was stable there was an order to it people believed in it and in the time we've been here see it's just what i say been here 50 52 years now we're about to see what i learned this is something i learned just now our sense of reality meant something that wasn't so fluid, which by saying fluid doesn't mean free and clear and enlightened. It's not that it was so fluid that we could just make up our own. We thought about like Zen and yoga and shit that's on the outskirts of reality we thought of reality as being stable because we all agreed on reality because everybody agreed on it there was sense to it as time goes by here, all of a sudden, you really can look at it and say, you, you talk about being on time for work, you talk about somebody saying you are expected to do something, and you talk about all these regulations that we've put in place before the veil was lifted, and I thought it was coming down. But it's not coming down. It's just people are closing their eyes to it. Reality in a denotative sense has become ephemeral, something that is something that lasts in about a 24 hour period. Ephemeral has become something that <coughs> is said to be a short period of time, but it originally meant a 24 hour period of time. Now it's become a short period of time. It's becoming shorter and shorter and shorter than this reality because now, there's no stability to it. You've got so many people throwing out ideas that 
there are no groups that agree with anybody anymore, with each other anymore. And so now we've reached a point where we can choose our own reality. And the problem with that is there's nobody to gauge it against. There's nobody to gauge it against anymore. So within ourselves, we can change our reality from one second to the next. It's gone from being ephemeral to maybe infinitesimal. Just minuscule. As soon as somebody disagrees with you, they're wrong and they're not in your sense of reality. And the only reason people can still believe that their reality still exists is because they don't have anybody to agree with them so they can change it all the time. And here we now have somebody comments, Roy commented on me on one of these things I did three, four days ago. It's hard to keep track of because keep doing things. I'm not changing my reality. It may be that I'm changing the reality of other people. And it may be Roy is the one that understands what's happening. Roy just commented with a question mark, LSD. I'm, I'm looking at this, I'm going, how does this even relate to the thing that he's commenting on when he comments? Is, is he fucking with me? Yeah, it was a close one. Is he fucking with me? LSD, lysergic acid diethylamide. I, I couldn't make the connection, but it, it just occurred to me. It surprised me to see that I've got like 1.1 1 .1 K, 1100,000, 1100, 1100. 1,100, 1 1.1K, 1 .1 1,100 videos out here. And I realize he's saying LSD. I, what is he somebody that's suggesting that just my existence alters reality? Does it no longer take lysergic acid, diethylamide, a, a mood-enhancing drug, something that was originally brought up to help with mental disorder, like manic depressive, I believe it was. I'm, I'm not getting into that. I've just got the question, why does he respond with LSD? Is it because if you were to take 1,100 videos with someone in a car in the back seat, sitting there quietly, whether restricted or free, could you change their mind with it? Is there a philosophy? Is he saying that you better fucking cut it out? Is he a bot? Is he some computer on Jeopardy asking me a question? Is he warning me that given long enough 
of a stability, a stable philosophy that grows every day. It, it may only be growing quickly for Roy, but it's been a whole lifetime of it for me. I'm trying to find a better way. That doesn't mean I'm pushing it on you. I'm just trying to say, isn't there another way? And I'm just trying to see how things can work better for me. And if they work better for me, maybe they can work better for others. Maybe it's got nothing to do with Timothy Leary. Maybe it's got nothing to do with a drug-induced mindset. Maybe it's just that they call me the seeker. I've looked high, I've looked low. And I really wasn't actively looking. It's just like David Copperfield, not the magician who allegedly raped somebody and could have escaped from jail if he was really magic. I'm talking about David Copperfield, that kid that Uri Uriah Heap got the name of their band from. Who wrote David Copperfield? Was it Dickens? Could it just be that I'm somebody that's walking along? and seeing things constantly. Not because I'm trying, but because a rolling stone gathers no moss. And as you slide across the moss of humanity, hmm, your mindset's gonna change. You just learn from the things that you see. And it's not mania. There's no joy in running across the backs of the ignorant or the unenlightened, nor those that just never had a chance It could be that Roy is saying, I don't like the drugs, but the drugs, they like me. Put somebody in a car, you could pretty much drive from here to Wisconsin and then over the world to China and get a slow boat back to San Francisco and hitchhike past your hometown of Gaylord all the way to Boston. And if you listened the whole time with somebody else driving and nothing to think about, it could seep into your mind. And somewhere in there, you might find something that actually makes sense. It takes things that don't make sense to open up the mind to this unstable reality.